Hi, Greeny. It's Shawnee. Speaking of fight all ho, there was a Facebook post from my old bass player. Someone recorded a show we played in Shreveport, Louisiana, and it was one of those. Too much cursing, but that aside, it was one of those. Uh, that's how I started my morning watching that uh, show. It was one of those nights. Is those guys were incredible, incredible. They were on fire. So uh, yeah, I was uh, reminded of Fight Alaho this morning. And uh, I've got to play with a lot of amazing musicians. I don't know how that happened. But uh, so let's see, that break, take me to one of my favorite bands is Skin Dread. And one of my favorite musicians, Benji Webb. And, uh, but like Trujillo, Cantrell, Allison Chains, you know, those are all like favorites of mine, band wise. Um, Fight All Ho, personal reasons. And uh, let's see, what else? Actors that inspired you. Well, John Candy inspired me. And um, I did a play with uh, Richard Dreyfus, and he was a big influence. He had like kind of took a uh, shine to me and I was the understudy for the playwright's daughter and then they extended the play and and uh, I got to go on for the last for the extension which was pretty exciting and um, Jeff Goldblum was a teacher of mine and he's super fun to work with because acting is like a game of tennis so the better your opponent the better you play um, and I've gotten to play with a lot of great people. I couldn't even begin to name. I've been so lucky. And favorite movies, I don't know. Secret Garden comes to mind just because i that's such a beautiful story. And it was such a beautiful film. But I have a lot of favorite films. I like old stuff too. And uh, TV shows, well, that's Becker. I'm partial. But it was, you know, the writing was that good. And Ted Danson. I mean, everybody in it. So, uh. Anyways, you play guitar. I love musicians. I'm in awe. Rock on, Greeny. Rock on, brother. The Fight All Ho video was um, live at the Pinstripe Lounge in Shreveport, Louisiana. And it's nuts. Um, I just clicked on a link. My bass player put it up. But you might be able to find it on YouTube. Uh, try not to be distracted by all the cursing. There's too much cursing. But uh, my uh, my dad doesn't approve <laughs> all the cursing. <laughs> oh, wow. hey. But uh, it's rock and roll, you know? Mm. Kind of goes with the territory. Let's see, the blob. Yes, it, there was no... The blob was actually... Um, had a lot of practical effects, which was super cool to me. I resaw it because um, they came out. I did a commentation... Common, commentate? commentary for um the new blu-ray release and i hadn't seen it in decades and uh it was super cool seeing all the practical effects but a lot of times yes i was reacting to like a piece of gaffer tape on a stick or tape to the side of the camera <laughs> you know screaming for my life um so that was a lot of um a lot of the time it was that so good thing i have a good imagination but they used all kinds of super cool things to um and all kind of different things for different scenes um for the blob i thought it was a pretty good movie and i just resaw it what's up greeny my that's my mom making my uh the frosting for my birthday cake for tomorrow that's about the most exciting thing that can happen to a person is to have this woman make your birthday cake. So that's pretty exciting. I can't believe you brought up Easy Prey and Crime of Innocence. I was young enough that she had to be on the set with me for those movies. And let's see, Gerald McCraney was super great to work with. The problem with that movie is we had to loop pretty much 
every scene in the car, which was pretty much every scene. That was tough. But I loved working with Gerald McCraney, such a gentleman. Andy Griffith, a little strange, not gonna lie. Um, but uh, that was my first starring role. So that was pretty exciting. Good morning. As you can see, I slept in my t-shirt. I was so tired after stripping my mother's gazebo all day yesterday that I just passed out in my clothes and woke up in my clothes to <laughs> my mom and kids did a birthday scene for me out here. It's hysterical. It's my birthday today. I got the glasses to prove it. So I'm standing in, I'm giving you a tour of the gazebo. Over the last three days, I've stripped and pressure washed and sanded about 20 years of um, brown stain like solid stain. So yesterday I was a nut and worked for like 10 hours straight. I couldn't stop. All right. Hi. So uh, let's see. Uh, desperate hours. Um, what was funny is that Mickey Rourke at the time would lock himself in the trailer because he was uh, on the phone with his girlfriend at the time, who I ended up doing a TV series with, Becker, later on, Terry Farrell. But I couldn't have guessed, you know? It was like more than 10 years later that would happen. So it was kind of funny. And uh, lucky chances, I don't really have great memories of that. Stand. Diane Lane had that part. Uh, she and Rob Lowe were friends, and she was supposed to play Julie, Lowry, and then she got pregnant. And by the time they filmed the stuff in Vegas, six months later, she would be showing, so I looked into that one. Super fun. A lot of that stuff was improvised, so I just had so much fun. Hiya, Greenie. So I'm uh, still at my mom's and I finished the gazebo. I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. And now I'm ready to take a really long nap. <laughs> um, thanks for watching the, for getting the Blu-ray and watching the commentary. I was pretty nervous about doing that because I hear I did a Saw 3 one commentary. But I can't remember. I thought the vlog was like the first one that I had done. And I was so worried about making a fool of myself, really. And uh, I made the decision. I hadn't seen the movie since when it came out. And I made the decision um, to not rewatch it until I was watching it during the, the Blu-ray. And I was pretty... Um, it was... I'm glad I did because it was fun, you know, to watch it again. And uh, I was surprised, man. I thought it was like a really good movie. And the cast was, myself aside, the cast was like unreal, amazing. Um, and the practical effects. And, and I thought the writing was really good. You know, like the parents weren't stupid. And the I liked the romance, you know, between the two kind of equal male and female leads, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, I did watch the Steve McQueen version and uh, I thought it was kind of cool to take his part and kind of divide it into a male and a female. And I liked their relationship. And uh, I did not see Son of the Blob, 1972. And, um, I'm just a chatty Kathy. I'm tired. That's what happens. <laughs>
Hi, Greeny. It's Shawnee. I'm, I'm having to cameo you from the road because we're on our way home. <laughs> Stop it, Jackson. <laughs> Anyways, let me tell you how to memorize dialogue. You just write it all out in a um, like paragraph form. Don't worry about punctuation or, you know, just write it out, all your dialogue in one paragraph. No punctuation. And then you just read it through, like you're just reading the newspaper out loud. And then your, your muscles of your mouth just start to memorize it. And so you just say it out loud. Sometimes like if I have an audition or a, a day's work, I'll write it all out. Uh, I do it in three, so I'll write it three times and then I say it three times and then I try and do it by memory three times and then I take a break and then try it again. So um, that's a great way to memorize dialogue. I learned it in my, uh, where I trained at Playhouse West in Los Angeles with Bob Carnegie and Jeff Goldblum. Greatest place, one of the greatest places for an actor to train, train in my humble opinion, the best, but I don't know them all. So anyways, uh, so yeah, that's how you do it. This is my latest so, film, there are the implements, stepped on a nail yesterday, it was a thin, clean finishing nail, I believe it's somewhere around right there, I was down here barefoot. Don't ever demolition in your bare feet. I have shoes on today. Um, I don't know how to turn this back around on me. Well, I have no idea what I look like if I'm even on camera right now. This was a mission. Now I gotta figure out how to burn it all. Burn it all! <sighs> I think the nail pit was easier than this. Scream Queens was um, a lot of fun. I got to work with James Gunn, who <laughs> just is killing it ever since then. And uh, But I had a baby, so, you know, we're killing it in different directions. Anyways, James is awesome. That show was super fun. I'm glad to need your one too. She was a badass. I know a lot of female badasses. So what can I tell you about demolitioning? Always wear shoes. Never leave nails. Um, either just hammer them down or lay it, the thing, the board up against a wall. Never just leave it on the floor with the nail sticking straight up while you're doing other things barefoot thinking, I'll just get to that in a second. Don't ever do that. I didn't even curse when I did it. All I said was lesson learned, lesson learned, lesson learned, lesson learned, lesson learned. About 20 minutes I said that while I breathed and tried not to pass out. Anyways, this was my first kind of demolition like this. I didn't expect, there's probably like a hundred nails, a hundred screws plus glue. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I'm not kidding. I'm just going to sawzall it into pieces to burn. I'm even going to try and go through the other 2,000 nails everywhere. The good news is the house is probably built super solid. You're going to torment me and ask me to pick between Pacino or De Niro? How dare you? How dare you? I choose Brando. It's <laughs> my answer. Uh, yeah, I like to I like to fix up uh, my house. I think all the time though, as I'm doing this, you know, sanding, woodwork, and painting, and it's hard work. And I every time I do it, I think. I have such a great respect for people who do that for a living and have to do it every day. You know, I can like take time off when it's, when I'm tired and it's too much. 
and then come back to it and that probably makes a big difference so uh it gives me a lot of appreciation for uh oof, tough work man it is like physical especially that belt sander bart the belt sander hi greenie it's shawnee and happy new year to you it's been a very tough year for everyone i know aside from all the things uh, tough things we all have in common. Everyone I know is just like tough, uh, like sets of waves, just they keep coming. Um, I'm very touched that you, you, um, that you're touched by deciding. I wrote it a long time ago and it's a very special song. Best thing about good songs or movies is that, uh, they can like mean something to each person who hears them you know there's room for your own heart in there so I'm honored that your heart finds some meaning in that song and hopefully some comfort and um it can only go up from here right right what's up greeny nice to hear from you I hope you're doing well. Um, dang, you had the COVID. Ooh. Man, I got the second Moderna shot and uh, I got sick, man. It was bad. And in the worst of it, I was just like, I was thinking of all the people who've, like actually had it some scary shit greeny i'm glad you're recovered really glad you're on the other side of it patrick laverto is so that's so funny because i'm pretty sure that patrick laverto not only were you know were we in summer school together but Pretty sure we all went to the same dance class when we were even younger than um, Miss Susan was our dance teacher. And I think even Matt Labrado was in there. I had a kind of a crush on Matt. And I'm pretty sure that Patrick was my older sister's first kiss. Maybe handhold, maybe kiss which was so funny that I ended up working with him on summer school. And that's fine with me because I like Patrick. So that's okay if he was my sister's first kiss. He's a nice guy. And uh, let's see, I never ran into him while he was on JAG, um, but he is so cool. I totally agree. So. Patrick's awesome, and that's so cool you asked me about him. Ooh, it's trash day. Cans up at the curb. My good son. Greeny, it's Shawnee. Happy birthday to you. And thank you for my happy birthday. Um, 48. It just keeps getting better. But I'm a super late bloomer, so I feel like I'm just getting started, you know? Um, do I like Ozzy and Rush? Yes and yes. Um, songs? Well, fairies wear boots. Um, moving pictures? All the songs? <laughs> um, Red Barchetta? Your studio is amazing. Um, 1974 Les Paul, are you kidding? It's funny because I've played music with two people who played three people. I don't know if Jerry, no, I don't know if Jerry played with, Ken Trail played with Ozzy, but Robert Trujillo, who I started Fight All Ho with, played with Ozzy and Jerry 
now of course Metallica. Um, and he's the same exact dude as when he was just, you know, hanging out in Venice, playing with infectious groups. I love when that happens. Good things happen to good people. And um, and Matt Dozat played with Ozzy, guitar player, songwriter. Of, um, Matt and Heather, I don't know if they... Hydra Vibe, yeah. Anyways, we've written a lot of songs together, and he played with Ozzy. So there you go. Six Degrees of Separation, something like that. I'm sure it all connects to Kevin Bacon, <laughs> who I did a movie with, yeah. Dang, Greeny, it's all coming together. Happy birthday. There's magic in the air today. All right, happy summer, July. We're like hanging out on the deck and trampolining and beautiful, man. Nests of baby birds everywhere and I don't know. It's a good time. Happy to be on the other side of this pandemic and uh, life is good. Hey, Greeny. How you doing? What's up, Baltimore? Nice to hear from you. I am uh, in the kitchen. I like to make food in big batches. I'm not like a meal, meal, meal person. I just like to provide every once in a while, you know, I'll do the full meal, but I just like to have lots of, you know, options. I like to, you know, get in, go big, get out. Any roles you were offered and regret turning down? Well, I don't know if I was offered, but somewhere I was close in the process for Married with Children. And I turned down, I don't know, the audition or the something. Anyways, I didn't get the comedy at the time. Um, big mistake. Meanwhile, Christine Applegate's an old friend of mine and I'm so happy for her, but... Um, that was just some kind of genius what that you know young and dumb I think you know it don't know anything that's what getting old is Steve is knowing that you don't know anything so that's awesome great to learn that um, any roles I wish I were offered <laughs> yeah um, but you know the best Let's see, how do I put this? The best thing about roles I wish I were offered are usually because they were so good. And most of the time the actress plays them so well that I never begrudge it, you know? I just go, oh man, that would have been fun, but she killed it and uh, no negative feelings whatsoever. And I kind of believe that like we get what we're supposed to get, you know, like the roles that are mine already have my name on them. And the same goes for everyone else. Um, but yeah, there are roles I would have loved to play. Like um, the hot, amazing blonde dancer and all that jazz who came in. She was from Pennsylvania, I think. She was awesome. Or I would have played the wife or the ex-wife. Any role, basically, in all that jazz. And uh, Moulin Rouge. And, you know, I need to do a uh, musical. That's what this is telling us. Positive and productive for 2022. Well, here, tell you what. Greeny, you be positive and productive, and I'll be positive and productive. Deal? Shake on it. Thanks for the encouragement, and uh, thanks for the shout-out. Happy New Year! Au revoir!